Hey, welcome to this week's English lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to think creatively in English. You see, your goal is to speak English fluently, like a native English speaker. But in order to do that, you must think creatively in English. And I'm going to help you do just that today. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. All right, so let's take a look at this image right here. A very interesting image. And this is the advanced English sentence. The creative English sentence says the muscular cyclist rode his bike on the highway in the middle of the day because he was preparing for a big race. Now you see this sentence right here includes all the five W's who, what, when, where, and why again, in order to speak English fluently, like a native English speaker and make this creative advanced English sentence, you must include all five W's, but let me show it to you visually. So we have the sentence right here and we have the image. Now the first part of the sentence says the muscular cyclist. So let's get right into the image. The muscular cyclist look at this man's arms. And also look at his legs. He is very muscular. We can see in the image just how muscular this individual is. But also we said the muscular cyclist. Well, in the image, we see that this individual is wearing a helmet, a helmet used by cyclists. So who we have the muscular cyclist. So again, that helps us know the who now the next one is who, what? So what is happening? Rode his bike. Now, do we see that happening in this image? We definitely do right here. We see that he is on a bike. So again, when you're thinking creatively in English, use the five W's. What is he doing? He's riding his bike. So we have the what? taken care of. It's a little hard for you to see the top, but we're talking about the what now, what else comes up in the sentence? The muscular cyclist rode his bike on the highway. Well, wait a minute in the picture. How do we know that? Look at the image. You can tell that all the cyclists are riding on the road and we're assuming we're thinking creatively. Ah, this is the highway. So on the highway, now the next part of the sentence in the middle of the day that answers when, so again, we have who, what we answered where, and now we're looking at when, so how can we tell from this picture that it's the middle of the day? Well, again, look at his arm. The sun is hitting his arm in a certain way. Like it's right above him. Then look between the trees, how bright it is outside. So again, thinking creatively, ah, it's the middle of the day. Now let's keep going with the sentence because he was preparing for a big race. So we see right here, we already have who, what, where, and when, and now the why, how are we assuming, how are we thinking creatively that he's preparing for a big race? Well, we see one cyclist, two cyclists, three cyclists, and now four. We're assuming that they are all preparing for a big race. And this is exactly how we get this creative advanced English sentence that answers each of the five W's. Now, what about this image right here? Another great image. This image is of a woman and the creative sentence is right here. The heat was not working at her office. So the young woman decided to work on her project at the cafe this afternoon. So again, another amazing image that has a creative English sentence. And this sentence also answers each of the five W's who, what, when, where, and why. So let's take a look at this image as well. Let's jump to my screen and let's take a look at this image. So we have the woman right here again, she's sitting down. And we see in the sentence, it starts off. The heat was not working at her office now. Okay. This is the reason we're starting off with the why, 
Why is she there? But how do we know, or how are we able to come up with that idea? Well, look what she's wearing on her head. She's actually wearing a hat. Now I'm going to draw the edge of the hat right there. And this hat looks very warm. So maybe it's the winter time. So that's why we have the heat was not working. And then we have at her office again in the reason we have also a location. Let's continue. So we have why. So the young woman, wait a minute. Now we have who, how do we know she's young? Look at her hands. They're very beautiful. They don't have wrinkles on them. They look like a young woman's hands, right? And also look at her profile of her face right here. You can't see it too much. But you can tell, ah, she looks like a younger woman. She doesn't really have a lot of wrinkles. So who a young woman decided to work on her project. Now we're talking about what she's doing. We're answering the what. So we have right here. Ah, she's working on her computer. So the natural assumption is she's working on a project again. Thinking creatively in English using the five W's. Now we have who we have, what, and we have why the next part is she's working on her project at the cafe. Here we go. How do we know it's a cafe or how are we able to guess that? Well, look right here. There's a cup of water. Then we see some, some snacks right here that maybe she ordered. So again, we're answering the next W where is she? So we can have this right here where, and we have at the cafe. Now the last W is when, and we have at the cafe this afternoon. Now we can guess that it's the afternoon because well, she looks a little comfortable. It's kind of bright inside, but again, thinking creatively right here, thinking creatively in English, we're just guessing, but that produces this amazing sentence again. The heat was not working at her office. So the young woman decided to work on her project at the cafe this afternoon, all five W's who, what, when, where, and why, but what about this image right here? Another great image. This image looks like there are two young men talking, but here's the sentence we can use for this one. The friends love comedies. So they laughed a lot while watching the movie in their living room. So again, we have this amazing sentence describing an image, but it uses the five W's who, what, when, where, and why. So let's just verify. Let's take a look at this image right here. Here we go. We're going to have the image on our screen right here. The young men they're they're talking together. But again, the sentence says the friends. So we see a man right here and also a man right here that answers who the friends again, thinking creatively. We're looking at this image. Hold on one second. We're looking at this image right here. Here we go. Now the next part says they love comedies. So we're just guessing, but again, what's happening. They love comedies, right? The friends love comedies. So they laughed a lot while watching the movie in their living room. So here we go. Now we're getting the reason at the very beginning again, love comedies. Well, how do we know that we're not for sure, but again, we're thinking creatively. So we're probably guessing, ah, they look kind of happy. So the reason is they love comedy. So we have why the next part of the sentence says, so they laughed a lot. What were they doing? Laughing a lot. All right. We see right here, their smiles on their faces. So this answers what they were doing now while watching the movie. So the next W is when, when was this happening? When were they laughing? So again, we have when, and the answer is while they were watching, you see their eyes are looking at the computer in front of them while they were watching the movie. That's when in their living room, the last part. So again, let's look at the picture we see right here. 
looks like a beautiful area, a beautiful living room. In the background, there's a bigger television. Then this is a, a fireplace. So we're assuming it's a living room. So we have where each of the five W's who, what, when, where, and why again, in this creative English sentence, the friends love comedies. So they laughed a lot while watching the movie in their living room. Again, thinking creatively in English using the five W's. It makes it so much easier for you to sound like a native English speaker. But what about this image right here? Another good one. Again, a beautiful picture. And here's the sentence after a stressful week, the woman decided to visit the lake to get some time alone or to get some alone time. Again, a great sentence describing this image, but the most important thing is does this sentence, this creative English sentence actually include each of the five W. So let's look at the image a little closer. So again, we have this image, the woman on this beautiful lake and the mountains in the background. And here's the sentence again, after a stressful week. So we're getting the why now again, you're thinking creatively. So looking at the picture and looking at the woman, it can be assumed, ah, you know what? Maybe she had a stressful week. I'm going to change the color. Maybe she needed to get out. And so she decided to go to the lake again. She looks very relaxed. Look how her shoulders are very relaxed. They're dropped down. Maybe the reason is because she had a stressful week. So that's the why the woman. Now we have the person for who. So we're answering the who, how do we know it's a woman? Look at the hat and also the hair. We can tell that it's a woman and also the shape of her body. We can see that it's a woman in this image. So we have why stressful week who this woman decided to visit the lake. All right. So what did she do? She decided to visit the lake, right? She decided to visit the lake because she wanted to get some alone time. Now, something very interesting is we're seeing there are two options for the reason earlier. I said after a stressful week, right? Why she had a stressful week, but look at the end of the sentence. She wanted to get some alone time. So these two things can both be reasoned and also answer another W. So let me continue and I'll explain the woman decided to visit the lake. So what did she do? She decided to visit the lake. And again, we see the lake right here and she's actually in this canoe right here. Right? So what, but when did she go after a stressful week? That's why I said that first part can be a reason for why, but it can also be when. So after a stressful week, now we're going to say this is going to be for when, when did she go after a stressful week? Now the last portion is what we're going to use for the reason. So we have who, what, when, now, where is she? Remember, we just said she decided to go to the lake. The lake represents where you see how they can answer multiple W's, right? So she, where is she at the lake? When did she go after a stressful week? Now, why did she go to get some alone time? Because she had a stressful week. But how does we know that she's alone? Well, look in the picture, we can only see her. So again, each of the five W's is answered in this sentence, this creative English sentence after a stressful week, the woman decided to visit the lake to get some alone time thinking creatively in English. But what about this image right here? Another amazing image. We see three individuals in this image and here's the sentence. Three college friends decided to meet up at their old hangout spot yesterday to look at some pictures. Again, a great sentence, a great image. This sentence also has each of the five W's who, what, when, where, and why but let's look at it together. Here we go. So we have the image right here, the three friends sitting together, right? Now here's the first part of the sentence. Three 
college friends? Well, that answers the who I'm going to change the color right here. Let's do this color right here. So now we're answering who, well, we can see very clearly right here. We can see very clearly. Hold on one second. Let's take this part out right here. There we go. We can see very clearly. There's one individual, it's another individual and a third individual. So we have three individuals and look how they're smiling. It looks like they are happy to be with each other. So we're assuming, Hey, maybe they were college friends again, thinking creatively in English. Now what happened next? They decided to meet up. So that's what happened. They decided to meet up at their old hangout spot. So I'll go forward a little bit. Their old hangout spot. That is where, so look how comfortable they are. He's sitting comfortably in his chair. She's sitting comfortably on the ground and he's also sitting very comfortably. So they're at their old hangout spot again. Where are they? That's the W where now yesterday to look at some pictures. So now we need to, excuse me. <coughs> now we need to answer what were they doing? What did they decide to do? They decided to meet up. All right. So we know where at their old hangout spot, but what did they decide to do? They decided to, Hey, let's meet up and come together. Now that answers what, but when now in the sentence, we see that it says yesterday again, you're thinking creatively in English. When you're looking at an image and trying to make an advanced English sentence using this technique, there's no wrong answer. It's thinking creatively in English. That's the name of the technique, right? So when we said, ah, yesterday, why to look at some pictures where, why do we think that is the reason they met up? Well, look right here. We see them all looking at this computer and we can assume that they are looking at some pictures. Let me take this over just a little bit. We can see they're all looking at the computer again. We're assuming, but each of the W's are answered who, what, when, where, and why three college friends decided to meet up at their old hangout spot yesterday to look at some pictures. This technique again, will help you speak English fluently again, thinking creative in creatively in English is the way to go so that you can sound more like a native English speaker. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to talk to you next time. Have a great one. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. Here we go. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So today's story time actually is about one of my favorite memories from high school. So you know that I enjoy drawing and painting. I love things that are beautiful. I love artwork. I love going to the museum and just looking at paintings and photographs. So when I was in high school, I had an awesome art teacher. Her name was Miss Halstead. And I remember one day it was after lunch and I just happened to be walking through the hallway and I was about to pass her classroom. And I noticed that Miss Halstead was sitting in her room, the art room at her desk very quietly. And she looked like she was focused intently on something, but her shoulders were kind of down and she had a pen in her hand and she was draw it looked like she was drawing something and my curiosity got the best of me. So I, I walked into the classroom and even though I walked into the classroom, she still didn't look up. I had to walk all the way to her desk and then she looked up. Oh, Hey Tiffany, how are you? And I said, I'm fine. Miss Halstead. What are you up to? She said, Oh, I'm just sketching. And I said, Oh wow. Miss Halstead. I love sketching too. And that's when she put her pen down and she also put her sketchbook down and she said, Oh really, Tiffany, you really like sketching? I said, yeah, I, I really like sketching, but sometimes I try not to sketch when I'm in class because I don't want the teacher to think I'm not paying attention and I want to focus. And she started to talk to me and started to explain how important sketching and doodling actually was. She told me how she, again, as a full adult at that time, I think she was in her forties. She even in church 
while the pastor was preaching a sermon, she would sketch and doodle in her notebook. Now, I was in shock because, you know, the, the parents usually tell their children, hey, when you're in church, pay attention, focus on the sermon. So to hear another adult telling me that she actually sketched and doodled during the sermon, it really blew my mind. But she said, Tiffany, here's the thing that people that aren't artists don't know. You see, when we as artists are sketching or doodling, we're actually the most focused. She said, when I'm sketching in church and doodling, I'm actually paying more attention to what the pastor is saying. She said, it's just the way the creative mind is cre has been made. She said that she wanted me to start sketching and doodling more. She wanted me to do it even when I was at church. And again, I have great parents, so they were okay with me sketching because they knew I loved art. But she encouraged me to do it in class, to do it in church. She said, Tiffany, even when you're about to go to bed, an idea may pop in your head. I want you to also sketch then. Write down what pops in your head. She said, Tiffany, you're an artist. And it's actually not a bad thing. Now, I never forgot that. And I remember as I went through the rest of my high school years and then went to college, I continued to doodle and sketch in class. And I remember specifically when I was in college, I had a science class and we were talking about the anatomy of a frog. And while the teacher was teaching, I was drawing a frog and I was drawing the different parts of the frog and labeling the parts in my notebook. And what happened was when I took an exam, that image that I had drawn, I added colors and I added all of the information about the frog popped up in my mind. And I aced that exam and I realized how powerful creativity is and how important it is to visualize something because visualizing helps you to remember. So even now I sketch when I'm listening to a sermon, I sketch when I'm doing something or listening to a, a presentation because it helps me remember what I'm listening to. Maybe you're the same. Maybe you're an artist and you love sketching, but maybe you're not. Remember creativity is so important. And that's why I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and today's story. I'll talk to you next time.